This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, available now online for you to learn at your own pace with a certificate available upon completion. Click the link in the show notes to access today for just 50 euros. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and Muhammad from Cypher is joining me for episode four of our five-part series. And Muhammad and I are both very passionate about responsible business ownership. And uh, Muhammad, you are deeply passionate about building values-based businesses. And we're an industry that, especially in specialty coffee, where we talk a lot about how we can represent the producer more and so in this episode we're going to talk about the supply chain because there's a lot of fuckery that goes on in the Mm -hmm. way that people represent the producer uh, Mm -hmm. in their brochures and 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 on their social media marketing and then when you start to question what's in the bag there's a whole different story that's going on and how much they've paid for that coffee is a whole different story and and so I want to I want to ask you when it comes to making decisions of how you interact with a supply chain and how you choose suppliers, what mm-hmm. is the values that you use or what's the mechanism that you use to make those decisions? Look, um, it's a very good point. And I've, I've got a lot to say about this because, mm-hmm. you know, we're a big part of our business is importing green coffee. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and for that in specific, I want to highlight that the buyers are usually demonized uh, when it comes to that. But the mm-hmm. truth of the matter is we've been screwed by producers previously. Mm-hmm. Okay. In uh, what way? And in what way? In, I'll give you live examples. In, uh, in circumstances, we some producers needed financing and we provided them with the financing and mm-hmm. uh, they, they, they just disappear on you even after working with them for three years. Wow. So so it can happen. Yeah. It's part of the business. It's part of the business. You have to understand that it is challenging and you have to understand that green coffee is not, green coffee importing is not an easy thing to do. And a lot of times, you know, the these producers, there must be, you know, we know that there are reasons behind it, uh, mm. why they disappeared. Maybe they feel ashamed because they couldn't supply the qualities that they're looking for or certain circumstances or uh, other events such as, you know, uh, interest rates are increasing ra- around the world. And uh, maybe right. the specific producers borrowed a lot of money and uh, the cost has increased significantly on him. But what I want to highlight is definitely it can happen to both. Who is it happening more to? Definitely the producers. Mm-hmm. The, 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 I'm not look. I'm all I'm trying to tell you is that it can ha- it can be both ways, and mm-hmm. there is there is that um, you know producers around the world, whether it's coffee or whatever it is in Africa, they they they've been getting screwed for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't let me start about places like the Congo or places like, uh, you know, various locations around the world where mm-hmm. definitely the, the, the producers are, and even till this day, maybe a percentage of a big chunk of the, you know, the cup that's being sold in, in cafes, we know that the what the producer is getting out of it might not be uh, ideal. Now, to overcome that, what we do is honestly complete, transparent, communication that will lead to a, a, a successful long-term relationship so mm. you can't force people to sell you at a specific price mm-hmm. i'm just setting up an example right now we know when we cup a coffee we kind of know the prices at which this coffee should be sold at as well as what we can sell it at right when we bring it to the point mm-hmm. so we set up a base and based on that base, we know that there's, this is, we will never underprice a coffee. Okay. We will, we will give our offer to the producer. And if mm-hmm. the produ- if, a, if the producer agrees to that specific price, that means he's happy with it. That means he should yeah. be able to be covering his costs as well as keeping in mind that he wants a sustainable business from us over the years because mm. you can sell me a coffee at a specific price this year and it can stay in my inventory over three years and you gain nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What 
need to achieve is something that is ideal for you from a covering cost and profitability perspective for you as a producer, a coffee that I can get here to Dubai and move it across the supply chain quickly. At the end of the day, it's a cash flow game. What I want to do is get the coffee here, find the buyer for it, and that's based on quality and cost, price and 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 uh, quality. I think if you do this, if you follow this formula, everyone is going to be a winner, you know. Yeah. And if it if if there is a challenge involved with the producer, he's going to explain it to you, mm -hmm. and vice versa. We're going to explain it to them as well. So. <laughs> This is a, this is a, this is a, this is the real life example of what we go through with various producers. Please, I just want to highlight one thing. I just wanted to mention this point, Lee, because in the industry, there's a lot of focus on the, you know, the love story in relation to the producers, but mm -hmm. nobody understands the pain and the agony that buyers sometimes go through to make it happen. Responsible buyers. I'm not saying people who are gonna you know, screw the producers. I'm not talking about that. But from a buyer perspective, from an important perspective, I have to explain my challenges in order for the producers to understand them and for us to work together to mm -hmm. find a solution. Tell me what some of, tell me how the buyer gets screwed. Like, what does that look like? I'll give you an example. I'll yeah. just give you an example. Yeah. We prepaid for a coffee <clears throat> because the producer needed help in buying more cherry in order to try to, process that coffee for us mm -hmm. disappeared wow and we've been working with this guy for three years he just disappeared we're trying to contact him we're trying to find him at the end he responded and the reason was what i told you he's he feels ashamed he couldn't you know deliver the qualities of coffees and even though we've we've done it with him multiple times it's not the first time but it mm -hmm. happened why did you disappear? Just communicate with us. Tell us how we can help you find a solution for it. You know how much it hurt us from a cash flow perspective? I can imagine. You know how much pain we went through in order to manage this issue? And this happened in multiple markets, by the way, not only one. Yet different circumstances. And not to yeah, mention broken do. relationships, right? Yeah, over a period of time. Furthermore, I, I, I have anecdotes of various people for example friends in saudi arabia that they approve the specific coffee from africa and the coffee arrives totally different and not like one or two points or a small difference in profile perspective no very different than and much lower qualities than what the, what they agreed on right this is these are examples yeah. there are some examples of what happens another example can happen is in one circumstance we bought a coffee from a producer for a barista to to compete with mm -hmm. small amount of that coffee and you know at the end of the day you're buying a small amount of coffee and you don't want you that barista is in dubai and dubai is small you know it's a small mm -hmm. market so he wanted to use he wanted to be exclusive nobody else having that coffee that he wants to compete with mm -hmm. and uh, go figure the coffee arrives and that guy, same guy, sold the coffee to three other people, same coffee. And he he had <laughs> promised us that he's not going to sell it to anyone. It's only for this. And personally, I, I for us, it's just because he promised. Right. And that so that's another way how of do you, how we can get to how much does How much does your word mean in business today? Oh, my word. Your reputation uh, should precede you. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I'm old school like that. Yeah, I am, I am, I am, if I say something, I will never back up uh, out of it. Never. Because mm -hmm. I think these values and these essence and the, and this is what defines a man. This is what defines and a, a human being. Yeah. And a woman. Uh, by a man, sorry, I don't mean, a, I mean, human. Any, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, any human. You know, this is what defines you is what you say and how you stick to your word. And even if certain things happen, that, and this is what saddened me, is just communicate, mm -hmm. speak to us, tell us what's going on so we can work with you and try to help you. But, oh, you don't understand how much I value. Do and, you and find... You know what, Lee? Tell me. You know, even with clients, mm -hmm. you'll end up working with the same people that put a value for these things. Yeah, yeah you will get screwed. You will other. get screwed sometimes. Okay, yes. you will get screwed sometimes. But you know what? We did get screwed. 
But you think we changed our principles? لا. No. Zero. Nothing. It's hard. I understand. Some people change, but it's hard. But no, you stick to it. And you continue going on. I mean, it it's about integrity, right? And integrity is a subjective yes. thing. I, I've yes. definitely learned that over the last 12 months, that what I define integrity at is very different to what some other people define integrity at. And that's okay. But it's, it's, isn't it derived <clears throat> from the intentions? Integrity and yeah. intentions, are they Are they I aligned? Think uh, are they, are, they're are they aligned, equal? Yeah. And, I, and yeah. one thing that I found is that I had this kind of sense of naivety about integrity means one thing. But when we talk about our word in business, you really come to know what somebody's standard of integrity is mm-hmm. when it comes to living by your word in business because mm-hmm. opportunities to make more profit show up all the time. Um, and when your word come into, comes into play, particularly around uh, deals that you've made with producers or deals that you've made with clients, if you're mm-hmm. going to throw someone under the bus so you can make more profit and betray your word, this starts to change the way that you're seen within yeah. the industry. Yeah, 100%. And the word of coffee is small, by the way. Huh? Oh, yeah. This is what it's people way don't understand. It's than people think. Yeah, yeah. Because you, when you're in it, you think, you know, <laughs> but it's really small. <laughs> it's not like... And you just... Uh, this is what puzzles me sometimes. Even business. Lee, at the end of the day, you... Good people want to do business with good people. Mm-hmm. And, and you... In a way, I, I feel that this type of value-based business kind as a de- acts as a defensive mechanism against yeah. bad people yeah it's it's that's a really gr- great way to put it it's like this unspoken boundary that you yeah. create that keeps the shit people out yes. what a great place to end this episode <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, folks, join us for the last episode in this series where we're going to talk about navigating the tension between uh, the needs of a business and the employees that operate within that business. Uh, for sure, the barista mafia is going to come up in this next episode. Yeah. So yeah. stay tuned, folks. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.